Hello everyone and welcome to my Wrath of the Lich King class tips and tricks. Some of these tips and tricks will aim for beginners, but there will also be things aiming for more experienced players. Some of these will also be related to some of the new spells in Wrath of the Lich King. I've also made a timeline so you can easily skip to the class that you're looking for. Anyway, enjoy this video. The first class I'm going to cover is the Rogue. And a common mistake that you might accidentally do, and I've done myself, is to break my own stealth simply by spamming my stealth ability. But this you can easily fix with a macro. The macro will look like this and I will also leave it in the description. But what this makes you able to do is to spam your stealth ability. So even when you're stealth, you can hit this keybind and it will not break your stealth. But you can even make this macro even better and add an ability at the same time. So at the second line, you will type slash cast and then the ability. Usually I just hold down shift and left click on the ability to add it to the line. But what you will be able to do with this macro is to instantly stealth and use cheap shot. That way you save time and don't have to move your fingers and press two different buttons. You can also do this with for example zap. Now I'll show you how fast you can do this when you're mounted. So you hit the macro, you easily dismount, you go right into stealth and zap. Super useful in PvP situations when you need to zap a target instantly. But also the moment you get out of combat, you know you'll get into stealth and for example use cheap shot. Remember, you can always find these macros in the description below the video. Next up is the Hunter. And as a Hunter, you have a long cast time on dismissing your pet. But what if I told you there's an item you can use to dismiss your pet instantly? The item that I use to make this possible is crafted by engineers and it's the Steam Tongue Controller. When you use this item, you'll summon a tank and you can just right click the buff. That way you dismiss the tank, but also your pet instantly. I usually pay around 5 to 10 gold for these and then you get 50 charges. So useful if you need to dismiss your pet instantly. And you can probably even make a cancel over macro that will cancel the tank without you having to right click the buff. As a hunter, you're probably familiar with the spell Eagle Eye. You can use this to look into a far distance, but there's a problem the second time you hit the ability. Because it will break the current effect, so you'll no longer be able to look even further. But you can easily fix this with a macro that allow you to spam Eagle Eye without even breaking the current effect. This is how it will look like when you use this macro, allowing you to easily scout for different rare monsters or maybe even another player that you need to kill. When you're playing your character, there's probably a few aspects that you always prefer to use. Instead of pressing two different buttons, you can just make a macro that you can use to swap in between the different aspects. So what this will do is to swap in between aspect of the hawk and aspect of the cheater. So if I currently have aspect of the hawk active and I press the button, it will then swap to aspect of the cheater. You can easily customize this macro and for example also add in aspect of the viper. But make sure to not have three different aspects in the same macro, else you will spend too much time swapping in between the different ones. In the pre-patch, but also in Wrath of the Lich King, the hunter spell disengage will change. This will now be a spell you can use in combat to leap backwards. So for example in this case you can get in combat, jump down from a tower and leap backwards to avoid the fall damage. As a hunter you can also combine this together with the profession engineering. As an engineer you can craft different items to make a parachute, for example the parachute cloak. So when you combine disengage together with this you will fly for a long distance. And this is definitely my most favorite item and spell combination as any class in Wrath of the Lich King. Next up is some tips and tricks as a death knight. Did you know that your gargoyle pit will benefit from your haste? So if you have a trinket or weapon that provides haste, then you can use these items and summon your gargoyle. By doing this, it will provide a huge benefit from the casting speed and also increase the damage that you do with your pit. And the test that you see to the left is with a buff and the one to the right without any buff. There's a huge difference on the casting speed and the pet to the left will do way more damage compared to the one to the right. As an unholy death knight, you can control your ghoul, and this pet has a 3 second stun that you can use even when your own character is stunned. So what you could do would for example be to wait for the druid to bash you, and the moment you get bashed, you stun the druid to prevent a lot of damage. Would you like to do a lot of AoE damage, but only with one macro, instead of having to use Icy Touch, Plague Strike, and then the last ability, Pestilence? You can do these three spells in the correct order by making one macro. So as you see right here, I use spell number one and I press this three times in a row. By doing this, I apply Icy Touch 
Plague Strike, and even spread the diseases to all the other targets. Remember, you can always find these macros in the description below the video. The last tip I would like to share as a Death Knight is the fact that you can buff your Gargoyle pet with for example different scrolls like I do in this clip. Next up is the Mage, and the cooldown of your evocation spell has been reduced in the pre-patch. It will now be 4 minutes, but if you have 2 tier 3 items, I recommend you to use these before you use this cooldown. Because 2 tier 3 items will reduce the cooldown of your evocation by 1 minute. So you can equip the 2 tier 3 items, use the cooldown, unequip the items, and only have a 3 minutes cooldown left on your evocation. I still see a lot of mages dragging down their conjured water and food to the action bar, so they need to press two different buttons to drink and eat. But what if I told you you can just press one button and then you will be able to do these things at the same time? To make this work, you make a macro with slash use the name of the food and the second line slash use and the name of the water. So now everything will be a lot easier and this makes you able to never forget to drink or eat at the same time. Here's a funny trick that you can try to attempt to do on a shaman or a warlock. So when you have killed this player, summon a portal and run into it. The moment you get near the portal, use an invisibility potion to turn invisible for the player. This way you might bait the self-resurrection, for example from the soul stone or reincarnation. Sometimes when you're fighting a lot of different enemies at the same time, it can also be extremely difficult to keep track of your CC, for example your polymorph. But with the add-on big debuff, this will no longer be a problem. It will simply show you the duration of your CC above the target's nameplates. The last mage trick is for those of you that like to AoE farm with Blizzard. So after placing my first Blizzard, I make sure I don't move my mouse. Then I get ready to activate a second Blizzard, but because I didn't move my mouse, I'm now able to see the area where the first Blizzard is also hitting the targets. So this is an easy way to see if the targets is still receiving damage and the slow effect. Next up is the Paladin, and in the protection tree we can choose a new talent, Divine Sacrifice. A spell you can activate to redirect damage from your party members to the caster. But did you know you can use this spell and be immune to the damage that you receive, simply by activating your Divine Shield at the same time. You can see this, the rogue is taking damage, and the damage that is redirected to me is missed. Here's another thing that I like to do when I play on my own Paladin. Simply to make a macro that will swap in between the auras that I like to use. That way I don't need to keybind these and I don't have to click them. So by pressing one button I can easily swap between Devotion and Retribution Aura. Whenever you activate your Divine Shield or Divine Protection as a Paladin, the targets will also swap to another enemy. But you can prevent this from happening if you spam your different taunt abilities when your shield is active. This can be seen in the clip, my Divine Shield is active but I keep spamming my taunt abilities and therefore they're still chasing me. This can also be extremely useful as a retribution and holy paladin. So when your tank is about to die, you simply shield yourself and you start taunting. This will give the healer enough time to get the tank to 100% health. Next up is the warrior, and spell reflect is such a powerful spell in PvP, but it can also be extremely useful in PvE situations. But without a macro, it will take you a lot of time to go to defense stance, equip your shield and then use your spell reflect. So if you don't have a macro for this, you will need to press so many different buttons to make this work. And this will most likely take so much time that the spell reflect is not gonna land before you need it. Instead just copy paste my macro from the description, this will make you get into defense stance, equip your shield and cast spell reflect. I see so many warriors using their first aid when they're not in combat. This is a great way to heal, but you also lose a lot of rage. Instead you should use your blood rage before you heal. Because blood rage will generate your rage but also keep you in combat. So by doing this you will heal and not lose any rage during the duration. When you combine these two things together you will also have way less downtime, increasing your gold and experience you gain every single hour. And even when you're low on health you can combine first aid with your fear. So you fear the target and you recover with your first aid allowing you to maybe not die and instead kill the target. The next tips and tricks is for priests. You can use your shadow word death to deal damage to yourself, making you able to break out of a sheep from a mage. So when the sheep is about to land, you use your shadow word death on the target, self damage and then you break out of the sheep. 
You can even do this when you have your Powerwood Shield active at the same time. When you're fighting a Paladin, there's a high chance they will use their Divine Shield to become immune to damage and then start healing. But with your Master Spell, you can remove this bubble and right after fear the target, preventing the Paladin from healing or doing any spells. Whenever the Death Knight activates their Lichborn spell, they will become immune to sleep, fear and charm effects. But when this buff is active, they will also be turned into an undead target, making the priest able to shackle the Death Knight. This is such a powerful CC that will prevent the Death Knight from doing anything for the next 10 seconds. And because Lichborn is no longer active, the priest can now get close to the target and use Psychic Scream, fearing the Death Knight for another 10 seconds. You can even use your Shackle Undead on Ghouls, preventing the Death Knight from doing a lot of damage with this pet, but also using the stun ability. Next up is the Druid, and back in Burning Crusade, Druids were not able to use any Rage Potions. These were warrior specific only, but this will change in the pre-patch and in Wrath of the Lich King. So you can now use these before you pull, or maybe even during a pull, to make it a lot easier for you to tank the different monsters. As an idol druid, you can take advantage of your racial. So you activate Starfall, followed by Shadow Melt. When you're invisible, you'll still do the damage, and this can be absolutely insane in PvP situations, especially if you're a lot of druids doing this. As a druid, you first need to cat form, and then you can prowl. So two different keybinds to get into stealth. And sometimes if you spam your prowl, you might accidentally break your stealth. This can easily be fixed with a macro, that will turn you into cat form and use your prowl right away. So useful if you need to do a quick stun or maybe even a ravage. To make this work, you need to copy paste this into a macro and drag it into your action bar. And now whenever you spam this icon, you will turn into cat form and prowl instantly. Next up is two common tricks. Whenever you get slowed as a druid, you can activate your shapeshifting forms to remove the slow effect. Even if you're in cat form or bear form and you get slowed, you can always activate a new shapeshifting form to remove the slow effect. And the last tip, if a mage ever managed to polymorph you, you can break out of the polymorph effect simply by activating any shapeshifting form. The second last class is the warlock, and with a fell hunter you can remove a sheep instantly. The reason for this is because the fell hunter has a spell called devour magic. This will remove a magic effect from the target. But without a macro, you'll first need to target yourself, then use devouring magic. Simply just copy paste this into a macro to instantly dispel yourself. You can also instantly dispel a friendly player. You simply just remove the player thing and replace this with the name of your friendly target. As a warlock, you can easily add a lot of damage over time to different targets. You simply just use a mouse over a macro. So wherever you drag your mouse, and if you press the skill at the same time, it will dot the target. Like you see right here, I have a main target, but wherever I mouse over, I will cast the dots at the target. And to make it even easier, you can also make a cast sequence macro that will swap in between Corruption, Curse of Agony, and Immolate. Pay attention to the second ability on my action bar. This will swap in between these three abilities, I just spam the macro, and it will add all the damage over time to the targets. If you wish to not stand still and cast any damage over time, you can just remove Immolate and now you use Curse of Agony and Corruption. This allows you to move and dot the targets at the same time. The last class in this guide is going to be the Shaman. And you might have seen this before, but some people are able to stack the totems on top of each other, making it more difficult for other players to target one specific totem, for example your Grounding or Wind Fury totems. But when you use the ability to summon all four totems at the same time, they will also be spread. Instead, you should spawn these individually, and your fire totem will always spawn a bit in front of you to the left, the earth totem a bit in front of you to the right, the air totem behind you to the left, and the water totem behind you to the right. So with this in mind, it will be easier for you to now start stacking the totems. But of course, it will require you to do a lot of practice to master this. In the pre-patch, the shaman will receive a new weapon enchant, Earth Living Weapon. Whenever you cast a heal, there's a chance to place a heal over time on the target. So when you're playing Elemental Shaman, or for example Enhancement Shaman, and you're low on health, you can always swap to another weapon with Earth Living Weapon. Then you cast a heal to have a chance to get the heal over time. And maybe you're lucky enough to get some additional healing, and then you swap back to your main weapon to do some more DPS and get healing at the same time. 
Whenever you're low on health, or if you're fighting an elite monster, you can kite these forever. All you need to do is to spam your Frost Shock ability. The slow effect lasts longer compared to the cooldown of the Frost Shock, so this you can keep up forever. You can also combine it with an Earth Totem and for example some other totems. Also remember to always have your Water Shield active at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wish to support the channel, you can become a member. This will also give you a badge next to your name whenever you type something in the chat. As a member, you will also get early access to different videos, for example my gold making and investment videos. Another way you can also support the channel is by pressing the thanks button. This will donate an amount and add this into the comment section below the video, letting other people know that you support the channel. But yeah, that's about it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Peace.